Hello, fellow Fingsters. I hope you're having a good week. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to bring you a new concept, a new tutorial, and that is how to extract text from images in Python using OpenCV and Easy OCR. So OCR means um, optical character recognition. Um, it's a term that you can easily search for thousands of tutorials in Python uh, in order to do this. Um, but what is special about this tutorial is that when you search for OCR in Python, you'll come across a library called PyTesseract. Um, and we are not going to talk about that in this tutorial, but we are going to talk about easy OCR. Uh, why is that? And that's because for one, I think there are enough tutorials of PyTesseract now on the internet. So you don't need me to <laughs> come up with another PyTesseract tutorial. Um, the second reason is that Easy OCR is a really interesting library. Um, its main difference from PyTesseract is that it is deep learning based. Well, PyTesseract actually come up with LSTM as its, uh, as its algorithm uh, from its fourth version onwards. But it's been um, around since 2007. It's been some time. And it started with the classical text extraction methods instead of the deep learning ones. Yeah. So in this tutorial, I'll mainly show you how to use easy OCR, how to utilize the deep learning framework um, in order to extract text from your images. Before we begin, just would like to remind you that all the tutorial, all the code of this tutorial is available here at this GitHub link, which are in the which, which is in the description below, um, together with this blog article. You can access the this blog article from the Finster's blog, which the link is also provided at the description below. Okay, let's get started. And as usual, before we start a project, uh, I will usually create a new virtual environment for the project itself. In this case, I've created a virtual environment called OCR dash um, It's easily done from Anaconda Navigator. Um, and then after you've created a new virtual environment, you can just go to home and select applications on the VM itself and then launch a, well, in this tutorial, I use JupyterLab, uh, but feel free to um, make a script on, um, I don't know, VS Code or Jupyter Notebook or any, um, any IDE that you like. So I'm at my Jupyter Lab and I've broken down the steps of the tutorials into three. So step one is uh, we are going to install and import, import some modules. The first one is going to be OpenCV Python. We are not exactly using OpenCV for doing the OCR, but um, we are using it to um, overlay the recognized the recognized text um, on the image itself. So it means we are going to take the original image, we are going to recognize the text. So we are going to put a bounding box on each text that was detect that that's going to be detected, and uh, we are going to display the text. So to do the overlay things, we are using OpenCV for this. Next, matplotlib and numpy. Um, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this already. Matplotlib is used to display 
figures, charts, images um, on in, in Python. Um, well, in this case, we are going to display all the images in line. NumPy is to, um, so especially in this tutorial, we are going to use um, NumPy for the operations um, because we are going to read the images in NumPy arrays and there are some NumPy based operations that we are going to do later. Next one, we are going to install PyTorch. But um, as I've as I've installed, I'm installing PyTorch uh, in a Windows OS. So this um, this line of command might be different for you. Let me show you what I mean. I'm now at the uh, PyTorch homepage, and when you press uh, install, uh, you'll be redirected to this page. And so um, it has a really useful feature where you can choose um, your configurations. Let's say if you are on Linux and you want to pip install um, and you happen to have a GPU, a CUDA driver, then this would be the command that you're going to run. But as for me, I am using a Windows and I might use Conda, but in this case, I use pip uh, and Python. And I decided that I don't want to, inst uh, to use PyTorch on the GPU. So I choose none. And this will be my uh, installation command. Okay, back to the notebook. So after you've determined the pip install command for your PyTorch, uh, after PyTorch is um, installed, then proceed to install EasyOCR. Why do we need PyTorch? Um, that's because EasyOCR, um, the deep learning framework of EasyOCR is actually built uh, using PyTorch. So that's kind of like a prerequisite. After this is installed, um, all you need to do is just import the libraries, the modules. So we import CV2 to OpenCV import NumPy as MP, the same old, same old, import EasyOCR, import matplotlib, pyplot as PLT, as well as um, doing the magic command, matplotlib inline. Note that this is just applicable for Jupyter Notebook. You don't have to do that if you are running a Python script. Okay, step two, we are going to do the real work here. We're going to load images and recognize text using easy OCR module. So first and foremost, I have downloaded some images from unsplash.com. So uh, those images because of copyright reasons, I decided not to include them in the GitHub repo but feel free to look for the same or similar images or even use your own images and test. Uh, that's the most direct way to test how the easy OCR is performing. But for me, I have five images, um, a car plate, a handwriting funny protest banner, um, a digit, printed digit, um, and an invoice, it would be f um, intriguing to see how easy OCR performs on invoices um, and a normal public sign. And here's the real work. <laughs> you just need only two lines to perform OCR to extract text on uh, using easy OCR. So basically this is a function called recognize text and this recognize text function takes in a image path which we we assign so this is like a an image directory and it loads an image and recognizes text so using easy ocr dot reader this is to initialize the 
um, OCR reader. And this is a list of languages that you want to detect. So to keep things simple, uh, I'm going to detect only English text. Actually, um, Easy OCR can detect more than 80 languages so far till date. Um, today is 7th of March in 2021. And according to the documentation, it can recognize more than 80 languages. So it will be fun to test uh, how good it is in your mother tongue, in the languages that you know. And we initialize that into uh, as a variable named reader. And we use this reader dot, um, the method is read text. Um, and then you put in the image path. So it takes an image path, not even the images, not even the image arrays, but just a path. And then it loads the image and perform OCR directly. So it's quite impressive for me. Uh, only two lines needed. And <laughs> we are not talking about image process, uh, pre-processing yet, but this is impressive enough. Um, so this is how we are going to use the function to load the first image. So recognize text, put in the image one path, and we are going to return um, this, the output of this read text uh, method into a variable name result. And if we print the result, um, we'll see that for each, it, it returns like, uh, so for, tree information, I would say. So it returns tree information per text detected in the image. So we can see that first it detects a, a string uh, called S. Second, as uh, CCC444 um, because it's a number plate. And then it detects tesla.com. Uh, and then it detects dual something, okay? Um, so this is the recognized text. And then it has two additional information that comes with this. This information is the, is the four vertices of the bounding box of this text. So basically it's the location of the box uh, that surrounds this detected text in that image itself. And the next information, so the third information would be uh, something like a number. Uh, and this number is actually the confidence level. Um, so mm, it ranges from zero to one. Um, when the value is zero, it means that Easy OCI is really not sure um, if the string it detected is fully accurate. So it is not. Um, so Easy OCR doesn't think that it is accurate at all if it is close to zero. And if it is close to one like this, 0 0.86 or 0 0.9, it means that Easy OCR is really, really sure what it returns here is very accurate. Okay. So this is the image <laughs> that I use for OCR. You can see that this is a rare view of a car, a Tesla, um, and it's CCC444. is detected quite accurately here. And the S, surprise, surprise, is actually here. Like it's at the, um, it's at the, left side of the number plate, the small text indicating the country. Um, the I, I guess it's EU. So it's the EU country that the car plate belongs to. And the dual thing um, is here. It's at the right hand side uh, of the image. Um, and I think it got the dual right, but this MSTOF was incorrect. Um, and that is why it also returns um, confidence level as, oops, it also returns uh, confidence level as 0 0.24 um, 
a very low confidence level. Okay, so that's about the easy OCR. We are going to develop it further. Um, in step three, we are going to overlay overlay those recognized tags that we collected from easy OCR using OpenCV. And this is a big chunk of the function. Um, before I explain about this part, let me show you the end result first. Basically what this function does, this function's name is overlay OCR text. It takes in an image path and also a string. And this string is safe name. It means that this image that it produced, the left side is the original image and the right side is the original image overlaid with bounding boxes of every recognized text element from easy OCR. And it's going to save this newly created image as one underscore carplate dot PNG. Okay. So this was the end result. We are now going to look at the function. So as mentioned before, this function's name is overlay OCR text. It takes in an image path and a image save name. First, it loads the image using OpenCV. So note that um, this is not for the purpose of OCR. Um, it loads the image using OpenCV um, for the purpose of overlaying those texts later. So it reads the image and because OpenCV reads the image in the color channel of BGR, so blue, green, red, we use this dot CVT color method to change this loaded image uh, color channel from BGR to RGB. Okay. And after that, we define the dots per inch um, of the image and we use this dot per inch um, to, to be divided with the width and height of the image. So image dot shape zero is the X. So is the width image dot shape one is the height and image dot shape two is the channels. So we take the X and Y. So the width and height divided by its DPI and make it integers. Mm. Yeah, so figure width is some integer number and figure height is another integer number. And then we use matplotlib to form a figure. And this figure, we are defining subplots. Subplot means that we want to display more than one figure um, in the plot itself. So we define a subplot of x equals to one and y equals to two. So it's, it's a subplot containing of one row and two columns with the figure size of what we calculated just now. And then um, I use this AXARR zero. It means that this is a subplot on the left to put imshow.image, um, which means which just means that I am displaying the original image on the left side. And after this OCR, we um we are going to display the process image on the right side. Okay, on the recognize text section, um, we recognize this function, which means uh, we are just taking the same two line OCR uh, code into here. And this result is going to return the three elements per text detected as we've seen just now. So for bounding box, text and confidence level, which is the probability in result 
the result of the OCR. If probability is more than or equals to 0 0.5, means that um, we only want um, to display or to form a bounding box around the detection which has higher confidence level. So it's uh, above chance level, confidence level. If, okay, so it's going to, it's a for loop, so it's going to loop through every detected text result. So if that detected text has probability of more than or equals to 0 0.5, then print this line. Detected text is the text with probability of the probability. And afterwards, um, we are going to take this bounding box and disintegrate them. Is it the right word to use? So take the B box, um, divide them into a clearer definition, which is top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. So note the sequence. And then for OpenCV, it needs an integer in, uh, instead of a float. So I'm going to, uh, I was going uh, in this code, I just made the top left to be integer, a tuple of integers. Um, and I do the same for bottom right. So, so far to draw a rectangle to form a bounding box using OpenCV, um, two points, only two points are needed, which is the top left and the bottom right. Here I create a rectangle for displaying bounding box, like you see it here at the right side of the image. So basically I use OpenCV dot um, rectangle and inside this method, I put in the original image. And point one, I put it top left. Point two, uh, bottom right uh, tuples, x, y, and color. Uh, now we have changed it to RGB. So we can put it red color uh, as 255 to select a totally red color and assign the green and blue to zero with the thickness of the box of 10. And after the rectangular, I want to put the recognized text. Uh, it's not very visible here, but we'll see later. Um, there's a little text at the, uh, above the bounding box. So in order to put the text in the image, I use the put text method of OpenCV. Same thing, uh, I assign the image and I assign the recognized text as text. And this one is um, ORG. Um, the name is a little bit confusing, but actually it means that um, at which point do you want to define the lower left corner of the text? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, basically, if you want to look at the definition, just press um, shift tap on Jupyter Notebook, and then you will see it here. Param or RG, bottom left corner of the text string in the image. Okay. And the top left, I want it to be X, exactly top left, uh, Y, is the top left one minus 10 means that I want to, I want it to be above the bounding box. Font face is just a font. Font scale, um, how big you want the font to be. Color, same thing. And thickness as eight. And after this for loop means that after, after every detected qualified detected text is being drawn on the image. Um, I use the matplotlib to show the drawn image. And finally, I also use matplotlib to save the image uh, in the designated folder.
So here I have run through, I've executed the whole notebook um, because as you see in the warning, CUDA not available, defaulting to CPU. This module is much faster via the GPU. Um, I'm sure this deep learning uh, OCR is much faster with the GPU. Um, for CPU, it, take, it took me around, I don't know, 10 seconds, but feel free to explore. And now we are going to look at how accurate um, it detects uh, those images. So we have seen this after uh, the, the Tesla car. Next, uh, it, I would say it performs quite well on car plates. Next for handwriting, handwriting is always tricky for OCR. But here, um, it, it detects everything. Don't send, don't send LMAO <laughs> if aren't laughing you. So other than the text sequence, it's, sup it's supposed to be don't send LMAO if you aren't laughing. <laughs> um, so it detected don't send LMAO if aren't laughing you. Yeah feels like Yoda talking. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I would say it's quite accurate, uh, uh, but the sequence is a bit mixed up. So what about digital digits? So printed digits, I would say it detected everything. So 30,480 kgs, kilos, kilograms, 60,200 lbs, 2,185 kgs, 4,820 LBS. Yeah, bingo. This is spot on. And next one, it's invoice. Um, you can't really see it from the small text here, but I've checked for you guys. Uh, this is also spot on. Um, it detects everything here that is detected on the invoice. Um, this is impressive for me. And finally, road signs. So notice, thank you for noticing this new notice. You're noticing it has been noted and will be reported to the authorities. Note that there are different images. Uh, well, uh, there are different texts. One is, well, this is inverted text. Basically, the text is, uh, the text has no color and the background has color. And then there's this, the text has color and the background has no color or at least paler color. And then there's this smaller text and uh, it detects everything here. See, notice, thank you for noticing this new notice. You are noticing it has been noted. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I would say in a nutshell, I find easy OCR quite useful. It, um, feel free to explore um, this library uh, if you ever need to do easy OCR. Um, usually, usually before um, when we use classical method to do OCR, um, image pre-processing is needed, uh, especially when the image has blurred text or uh, the text is subjected to uneven lighting or covered by shadow. Uh, in this case, you can easily use some, well, you can dabble around with some image pre-processing techniques um, to make the OCR perform better. But I would say easy OCR works out of the box for me so far. Um, and um, it is really, really good. So before I end this tutorial, just would like to um, show you something fun, which is um, for the detected text, other than overlaying it um, on the images, you can actually use the text to do some speech to text to speech recognition. Um, what you need to do is um, install this text to speech um, module. And use the OCR perform the OCR once again. And then for every detected, detected text, you kind of join it, join them together to form one sentence. And when I print the sentence, um, I, I use the last, I use this picture 
for the OCR for the text to speech. So it's the same thing. Notice, thank you for noticing. And then you import the text to speech module, initiate the engine, and then set the property. This one is the voice rate. I set it to speak slower. And then this engine will utter the sentence. And that's it. Um, let me play it for you guys. Notice, thank you for noticing this new notice. Your noticing IT has been noted and will be reported to the authorities. Well, as you guys can tell already, this is kind of useless utterance. <laughs> uh, I do it just for fun uh, to show you how how quickly you can get text to speech to work. And that's it. That is all I have for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day and goodbye.